Hey, in this lesson, we're going to be creating a testing script and running over some of the fundamentals of JavaScript, which we're going to be applying and having a solid understanding of the foundations of JavaScript is going to be really helpful with Google Apps Script because, of course, it is based on JavaScript. So let's go ahead and create a new project, and this is going to be our JavaScript testing project and we're going to be showing you just the basics of JavaScript. And if you're already familiar with JavaScript, uh, you're welcome to go through the upcoming lessons or you can skip through to the next section where we dive right into writing code with uh, Google Apps Script. So the basics of JavaScript are that we've got variables and the JavaScript variables are ways or containers that allow us to store values. So there's a few different ways that we can declare variables so we can use the const value in order to declare a variable and a variable can hold and be assigned a value so this is an assignment operator where we're using the equal sign so basically what this statement is saying that a will equal to whatever value we've got on the right hand side so a is equal to a value and in this case it's going to be a string value strings can be identified with single quotes with double quotes and as well you can we can use the backticks in order to create string content so those are the backticks there and that's the key to the left of the one key on your keyboard so we can hold values in a string format that way and also we can hold and declare a value using the double quotes. And it's up to you, whatever you prefer. Uh, so constantly and more commonly now I'm using the back ticks, uh, but also I do use the double quotes and the single quotes. A lot of times when I am doing the recordings, I tend to use the single quotes because it's a little bit easier to read so that we just have the one quote instead of the double quotes. And sometimes on the screen that doesn't show up well. So that's the reason that I'm going to be predominantly using the single quotes to declare variables. And within Google Apps Script, similar to what we have within JavaScript where we can log out content into the console, we have what's known as the logger. And this allows us to log information out into the console. So I'll show you how that works. So we can log information about A, B, and C, log the variable values, and then we can just run the code so we can execute the code. And in order to execute code in Google Apps Script, we need to wrap it within a function. So setting a function is gonna allow us to select the code that we want to execute. So I'm gonna give it a function name of test1. And then the content that's contained within the function is wrapped within the curly brackets. The curly brackets in JavaScript as well as within Apps Script, they're gonna indicate that this is a block of code that needs to be run. So what's gonna happen when we execute this code? We're selecting the function by name. So we've got a test one for the name and all of the functions within the GS file are gonna be listed within the dropdown. So we can select any one of these functions and run them. So select the function that you want to run and and then that's going to run through the Google script and access all of these values. And let's go ahead and hit run. And so what's going to happen is we're assigning a value of value to A, a value of val1 to B, and a value of val2 to C. So these are all string values that we're outputting. And when we run the code, the logger is going to output A, B, and C. So we're assigning values. Now the difference, there's a number of ways to declare a variable. You could use using var in order to declare a variable. So this was a previous way to declare variables before the newer versions of JavaScript. And this works well as well within JavaScript as it does within Apps Script. Uh, but with the newer Apps Scripts, I would suggest that you do use const and let. So they are all containers and const and let are the newer versions and they run within the block. The block of code is indicated by the curly brackets. So this, these variables are being declared and they're only going to live within this block of code. Uh, so let's set up another variable and uh, we'll declare it. So using E and let E equal and whatever value we want. So let's give it another string value as well. And there are also options for the different types of values that we can declare. So we can also declare a number. So numbers are different data types and they're represented without the quotes around them. So numbers are just straight number values. And there's also Boolean values as well. So Boolean can either be true or false. 
and they don't have quotes around them either. So let's output the value of D and E and save it and we'll run that. So now we've assigned all of these variables values. So the difference between const and let is that if we take a const variable, so once a variable is declared, we're able to use it so we don't have to redeclare it. If you try to redeclare it, you're going to throw an error. So if I try to take A and I declare a new value for A, and let's save that and run it, we're going to get an error within the code editor. So that means that we've already declared const and we can't redeclare the variable. So that provides us some protection. If we've got some variables that we don't want changing within our script, then we're gonna define them as const. So let's uh, go ahead and we're gonna take A and we're gonna reassign a new value. Now remember, this variable is assigned as val, but we're using const. So const in a way locks it down, so it doesn't allow us to reassign a value. So we see that we do get this error, that assignment to a constant variable. So we're not able to do that. Uh, we are able to assign a new value for D and we are able to change the data types. Within the editor, you're gonna see that you get this underline here and that's because we're redeclaring the variable with a different data type. So the editor will throw an error or will underline the error, flag the issue that we're changing data types. So D was originally declared as a number and then we were trying to declare or reassign a value to D as a string value. So when we turn it back into a number and if the data type is the same, that little underline is gonna go away. And with var, we can reassign a value to it. And the same thing goes for let. We're able to reassign a value to a variable that's been declared using let. And let allows us to reassign values to the variable. Uh, so just as var does. And now for the most part, we're not using var anymore. So we can just remove that from uh, this example and we'll remove out the var. So let's run the code and we get all of those examples being output. So with the Google Apps script, you can as well declare variables that are gonna sit within the global scope. So this is a global variable and set it up as val. You can give it a name and you don't have to have it as uppercase, but typically if you do have a global variable, if it's running on the global scope, then we do use the uppercase letters in order to assign values to it. and now this value is going to be something that we can access globally to all functions. So that means that if we want to output the value within the test1 function, we can see the value sitting there and we're able to access it and use the value that's sitting in there. In addition, if we were to create a second function and just get rid of all this stuff here, and all we want to do is access the global value, then we can set that and we can see that as well. So we'll run test two and we'll see that we're still be able to access the value. So do use the global variables and the way the script file is gonna run, even though you're selecting a function to run, it runs all of the code within the script and that means that it also will include any of the global variables. Another thing with functions is that they are able to return values and as well you're able to pass values in and you're going to see that this being used quite often within uh, javascript that the functions are these predefined blocks of code that run and usually we've got a purpose for creating a function so we break apart their applications to have specific functions that are going to handle specific tasks so we can pass in uh, various arguments into the function and then we can use those values directly within the function so if we want to log it out, so using the logger log, let's log the values of val1 and val. And running another function, so we'll run a function that's going to connect to the test3 function, so we'll run test4. And in this function, what we'll do is we'll set up a couple variables, and I'll just, uh, I'll call these a and const b. And then what we want to do is pass those values into test three and have test three. So right now this function, what it's going to be doing is it's going to take in the two parameters and then it's going to log it out within the log. So passing in A 
passing in B as values. And this is the same thing as just passing in the value directly. So we can do that as well, and that's gonna work the same way. So now when we run test four, we can run the test four and we get the output of hello world, because what's happening is that val is getting assigned whatever the container A holds, and at this point, container A, A holds hello, and val one is being assigned the second parameter, and in this case, we're passing in that string value, and then that's outputting the value. And the nice thing about creating functions that do a specific task is that if you have another set of values that you want to run the function within, and in this case, we're just gonna be running func test number three, so passing in two different parameters into test number three, under function number five, we see that we still get that output, so it still runs that block of code. Another thing about functions is that we can actually return values as well. So we can return a value and pick that up within where we've called the function. So this is gonna return back a value, and I'm gonna take whatever the value of val1, and using a template literal, so those are the back ticks, and that allows us to select the variable within the curly, so we do a dollar sign curly brackets in the variable name, and this is gonna be what gets executed, so we can also have formulas here as well. Uh, so what I mean by that is if we had five plus five, we could run the code, and then lastly, let's um, have the value of val1 being returned back. So it's gonna return that content back, and that means in order to pick up that content, let's grab it from the variable, and I'll just create a variable, give it a value of temp. And within the log or log, we'll output temp. So what's gonna happen in test five is that we're gonna be assigning to a variable called temp the returned value from test three. And test three, we're passing in a few parameters, val and val one. So what we're doing as well, we're logging them out, but then also most importantly, we're returning them. So we've got val, and then we've got an equation here, so five plus five, and then val one, and we're returning that. So that's gonna be assigned to the variable temp, and that means that within the log, we should see what our response is from test one. And you can also see that this becomes very flexible because at this point, we can run test four, pass in different variables, and also log out whatever gets returned there. So let's try running test number five first, and then we'll run test number four. So we get our response of high coders. So that's this logger function, that's logging out the values that were passed in. And then we get high 10 coders, and that's the returned value, calculated value of five plus five, and output into the log. So it gets stored in the variable temp, and then temp is what we're logging out. Let's try running test number four and see what happens. So we get hello world, so we get two different values, and we're able to capture those values and still run the equation here, the five plus five, and return that value back and log it out into the log. So that's the basics of variables, holding values, containers of values, and then functions. And the premise for how we run and how we access code is that the functions are already these predefined blocks of code, and we can pass in values and assign values and store values and then manipulate those values as we go through the code.